Okay, so hey guys, it's Quinston and today we are going to learn about the quick select algorithm. So what is this algorithm? The quick select algorithm basically gives you the nth smallest number in a list. Now what is nth? Suppose you have a list of elements and you want to find the third smallest element or the second smallest element or okay the first smallest element doesn't matter because it's going to be the smallest element either way so one me method you can do this is by sorting the entire thing sorting the entire thing and just getting the element at which index you want it to be but the problem there is you have to sort the entire list first and that takes time so that's where the quick sort algorithm comes uh, sorry the quick select see what I did there quick select algorithm comes into the picture so it is a, a, it works a bunch like the quick sort algorithm as in it has the partitioning part of it and if you don't know what partitioning is you're in luck because I'm going to cover that in this video. Um, so the first thing you need to understand is what is partitioning. So for partitioning I've, I've taken an example and partitioning is very important so we will see this example thoroughly. Um, so what are we doing here? Partitioning basically means that you take, you select one element as the pivot. Let's say you take any element in this and you arrange that element in such a way that every element to the left of it will be less than itself and every element to the right of it will be greater than itself and the position will be adjusted in such a way that if you were to sort the entire list after partitioning the position of this element won't change because that's the correct sorted position of the element now you have to import and listen to that as that is very important because let's say I want to find the third sorry the fourth biggest element sorry the fourth smallest element if I sort the pivot in such a way that four is my pivot and I want to find the fourth what is the position of the four over here there is one two three and four so this becomes my fourth so I don't have to sort the elements any further okay this is my nth so kth smallest element and if you don't get that, wait for it. it we will eventually reach that point either way. Um, so let's think about partitioning. How does partitioning work? Now, I want to select an element and place it in such a way that the elements to the left will be less and the elements to the right will be bigger than itself. So that's why I take this element called the pivot. So I take this pivot, let's say I take pivot, and give it the list of left. So what is the list of left? Left in this case will be my zeroth index. And right in this case will be my... Uh, the, the last index. What index is that? One, a zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So my eight is my eighth index. Anyway, so this is not the number eight. This is the index eight, which means that zero, one, two. Yeah, you, you get the point. So pivot, my pivot will be equal to uh, the eight over here. Sorry, my pivot is list of left. Left is zero, so this value will be inside my pivot. Okay. So then I declare a variable called the left mark and I give it the value of left plus one. So left plus one basically is zero. So this value is zero right now, plus one, which is equal to one. So left mark, which is zero, okay, left, uh, left is equal to zero plus one. So this would be over here, pointing over here. Why? Because I want it to be a pointer. So I'll say it is LM. So I'll call this left mark. Then I declare something called the right mark and give it the value of right. Right in this case is 8. So I'll just write that down first before we forget. Left equal to 0 and right is equal to 8. So a left mark, uh, sorry, right mark will be pointing to over here, RM. It's not actually pointing, they are just variables, but I'll be using them in such a way that they'll be pointing, okay? And this is basically my pivot over here. My three, this three is my pivot and my pivot is, yeah, already there. So what we do is we basically uh, make the left mark move to the right until left mark becomes less than right and the pivot of the pivot is greater than the list of left marks. So let's just follow these rules and see what we find. So initially, this is an infinite while loop, an infinite while loop while left mark is less than right so while left mark is less than right so left mark right now is one it points to one right it, it is one right now while that is left and right right is what right is eight so is it smaller of course it's smaller yes it's smaller and list of left mark is is less than pivot what is list of left mark the list of left mark so this is the list we're considering and the index is one so the first the second element which is we start the indexes from zero so this is 2. Is 2 less than the pivot? The pivot is 3. 
Well, yes, it is. So what do we do in that case? You increment by one. So you change the left mark to, part, uh, to point over here. So forget that. Now the, list, the LM is pointing over here. Okay. Now I check over here. Is the left mark, this is the while loop, right? This is the while loop. So we'll go to the same part again. While left mark is, le is less than right. Is left mark re less than right? Well, yes, it, has, it is less than right, right? Yeah, it is less than right. And is list of left mark less than the pivot? What is the list of left mark? The list of left mark is uh, one right now. Is, it, is that less than the pivot? The pivot is three. Well, yes, it is. Of course it is. That's why you increment. So you increment by one. So now you're pointing over here. L, M. Now you check. Is the list of the left mark less than right? Well, yes, it is. But is the list of left mark less than the pivot? This is four. Is this less than the pivot? No, it's not. Four is greater. So what do you do? You do nothing. That's the point. You break out of the loop, basically. Then you do that. Do, do, do the same thing. So if you can imagine, we in the left mark, we are moving to the right. So for the, the right mark, we'll be basically moving to the left until we reach the left mark itself. So we check. While right mark is greater than left. Now right mark is 8. Is it greater than the left? What is left? 0. Of course it is greater than left. So it will be true. Is the list of right mark greater than the pivot? What is the list of right mark? List of right mark is 8. Is it greater than the pivot? Well, yes, it is. So it will move to the right. Oh, is that that's the left. It will move to the left. Sorry. Then you basically check it again because it's a while loop, right? It's a while loop. It's going to go over and over again until this is false. So right mark again. Right mark is now 7. Is the right mark greater than left? Well, yes, it is because left is zero. And the list of right mark is greater than pivot, is it? List of right mark is nine. So yes, it is bigger than three. Similarly, you basically go over and over again until you find something that is smaller. Uh, that, that is basically, you know, not greater than the pivot. So you reach over here basically because one is the only element which is, le which is, which is uh, not greater than the pivot. So that's why where you break out. So now right mark will eventually moving this direction moving this direction be pointing over here so this is right mark over here right now after a few iterations then when you reach that point you basically check if left mark is greater than or equal to the right mark is the left mark greater than or equal to the right mark well yeah, yeah uh, well well yeah look at it left mark is pointing to left mark is pointing over here and the right mark is pointing over here, which means the left mark is on on a greater right hand side than the than the right mark. So so it is bigger. Well, yes, it is. This this condition is true then, which means that you have to break. It says break. So you break out of the loop, and then what you do is you exchange. So this is an ex uh, interchange function. Interchange. How does this work? I'll tell you. Basically, what you do is you take a temporary variable, you put one value in that temporary variable. You change the value which you just put in, so you take that value and put it in here, and the temp value you put in the one which you initially, which you want to change. So basically you're exchanging uh, the list of left and uh, with the list of list of right mark, I think, yeah, list of right mark. So yeah, list of right mark. And then you return the right mark. So if we do the same thing over here, if we exchange the left and the list of right mark, what do we get? Here we'll get three, and here we'll get one. So basically, and we return the value of the right mark. So right mark's value is, uh, is, is two right now. So we return the index two. Now, if you can see this, this over here, every element to the left is smaller than three, and every element to the, uh, to the right is greater than three. So that's a successful partition, a successful partition. Okay, whatever the spelling doesn't important is not important so yeah that is a successful partition now the main part you have to understand is if here I was I did not cross LM I did not cross it in that case what should I have done as you can see over here in that case if they did not cross each other you would have to basically exchange the right mark and the left mark to keep the essence of the the entire partitioning the essence meaning the left should be less than the pivot and the right should be greater than the pivot okay and then you continue from here with the while loop until you you either you reach the same point the left mark and right mark reach the same point or they cross each other and that's the entire essence of the partition function and uh, you need to understand the partition function because this is the the, the basis of the quick sort as well as the quick select which we are covering right now um,
Also, I just wanted to talk about the main function a little bit. What does the main function do? The main function in this case has a list. It's an empty list, so it, it doesn't really do much. It's an empty list. And, uh, and I'm populating it. I'm, what, what am I populating it with? I'm taking a bunch of random elements, okay? I'm taking a bunch of random elements, elements which are between one and let's say 100. So I'm generating elements uh, which randomly between one and 100. So after this for loop is run, and this for loop is run exactly 10 times, why? Because x, this is a for loop in which x goes from zero. So x will go from zero to uh, 10 minus one, which is nine. So x will attain the values zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So that's what, what this for loop will do. And basically these elements which are generated randomly between one and 100, which is the range, will be appended to the list. And basically after this function is done, the list will run, look something like this actually. It will look something like this. Just that the numbers are pretty big, okay? Then I print the list and then I call the quick select function. Let's go and see what the quick select function takes in. The quick select function takes in the list. Okay, it takes in the list which you're going to pass, which is, in this case, we are considering this list over here. Okay, then, then it takes in the left value, then it takes in the right value. Now, this is the starting index of the list, and this is the ending index. Now, some people will get confused and say that, hey, in this, I need to pass in the length. No, my friend, don't pass in the length. You should pass in the value, which is one less than the length because you want to point to the last index. And if you take the length only, it will give you one plus the last index. Remember that, that's important. Also, the quick select function takes this value k. The k is basically the value which you want to find. So k is equal to this, this third, second or whatever. So if you want to pass in, if you want to get the second smallest element, you need to pass two into the k. If you want to get the third smallest element, you want to pass in three. Remember, the k value goes from one to the length one minus one. Okay, it doesn't start from zero. That's why over here, we didn't start from zero. We started from one. So remember that we don't start from zero for the k. We start from zero for the for the array, obviously, and the list, but not for this. Now, uh, just for, forget about this for a while. Let's just look at this part over here. Split. What are we doing? We are splitting. What are we slip splitting? The list. So as you can see, we are, part, we are calling the partition function, which you know partitions the list and does whatever we just discussed. It does. We pass in the left and right indexes, which are, you know, whatever they can be. They can be anything. They, in this case, in the example, we we assumed them to be zero and you know eight, but but they can be literally anything in the list. So you partition the function and you get in the pivot point in the split function. The index of the pivot is returned to the split value, to the split. And then what happens is we calculate the length of the left side. So you calculate the length of the left side. So you say split, which in this case is 2 minus left, which is 0. So 2 minus 0 plus 1, which is 3. So your length will be 3. So up till the pivot, your length will be 3 in this case. Then you check is do I want the third smallest element or do I want the second smallest element or do I want the fifth smallest element? So in this case, let's say my k is equal to three. So if the length, which is equal to three right now, okay, length is three because we just saw what the length is. If my length is equal to k, which means my length is equal to three and my k is also equal to three, return the list of split. Oh, wait a second. So in that case, split will be equal to how much? Split is uh, 2, right? So return the list of 2. So that's what your answer is, 3. So what you observe from this is when you partition something, and this is a very important thing, when you partition something, the element which you consider as your pivot is in its correct sorted position. Correct sorted position. That's why the kth element will be, if it is equal to the pivot, that's why the kth largest element is your answer, if you know what I mean. If you don't understand this, you probably want the partitioning part again to understand it. Um, in, in, the, in the other cases, else if, if k is less than the length. Now, if k is less than the length, which means that your, let's say length is 5 and your k is 2. So, basically what it means is, let's say your k is 5, so 0, 1, uh, your, your length is 5. So, it's 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, it's 1 less. So your basically pivot is this, and you want to find the second, which is the second smallest. So your second smallest element will obviously be in this part over here, 
in the left part. Why? Because that's what the partitioning does. It arranges everything that is less than the pivot to the left hand side of the pivot. And that's what's happening here. So what do you do? You call the quick select function now with the same list. You, s you have the same left, but your right will change. R your right will be split minus one, which will in this case be four, because you know your pivot was six. The split minus one, four, so your right index will be this. And then you'll do the same partition function on this. And then you will find your answer. And your k will be the same. But if you have your quick select, which is, which is k, uh, greater than the length then what will happen is your k value will be somewhere in this part over here so you'll basically call the partition function with your left mark left here and your right here but your k must be adjusted so you'll remove the length from your k so if your k was seventh right if your k was seventh element then if you calculate zero one two three four five six seven so in this list your seventh will be the third so you need to remove that length, which is extra, to have this list be three, be the, be the third element. So yeah, so that's how this, this, this algorithm works. If you have any doubts and questions, uh, leave them in the description and we will solve them further. Also, I imported the random function. Uh, this is the first time I've been using a tablet to record it. So if it's a bit haywire, just uh, let me know. I'll, I'll make better videos next time. So thanks for watching guys, uh, I'll see you later and uh, yeah, thanks for watching, subscribe and like.